Hello everyone, welcome to Euro PCR 2025. My name is Dian Milošinović from University Clinical Center of Belgrade in Serbia, and I'm joined by two experts in the field. Professor Mohamed Abdel Wahab from University Heart Center in Leipzig and Professor Miroslav Ferenc from Bad Krozingen, both in Germany. The topic of the day is calcified bifurcations and what we will try to do is speak about how to tackle this complex lesion subset. I would like to start with you, Miroslav. I would like to ask you, what do you think, why is the issue of calcified bifurcations an important topic today? Yeah, important question. We should know there is definitely uh, important to make a differentiation between bifurcation and calcified lesion. If we just take a look to coronary bifurcation lesions, they have primary increased risk for um, para-interventional um, maze rate. We have um, not so perfect long-term results, particularly for the side branch. So we know Main branch is not really an issue. We have a maze rate of around 5 to 10 percent during follow up. And for side branch, we have a um, maze rate around 15 to 25 percent. And now, on top, uh, if we have to treat a calcified coronary bifurcation, this makes uh, this uh, problem much more um, problematic. This is really a problematic issue because we have to think about strategy, how to manage bifurcation, and on top there will be second strategy, how to prepare the lesion uh, to be stented with one or two stent. And that's why this is one of the most uh, complex uh, topics in interventional cardiology. Yeah, as you rightly said, both calcified lesions and bifurcations are associated with an increased um, risk of uh, adverse events. Right. Now, we need a strategy that combines both the bifurcation PCI and the calcified lesion PCI, so a comprehensive strategy. Right. Mohamed, is intracoronary imaging something which can help us plan and optimize these strategies for both calcifications and the bifurcation? So, so generally, the data on use of intravascular imaging during PCI are getting better and better, um, particularly when it becomes complex. So the more complex the lesion subtypes you are treating, the more benefit you get from using imaging. And as uh, Mike has just mentioned, you have here a combination of two sorts of complexity, which is the bifurcation per se, for which we have very good data on the use of imaging and the impact of imaging on prognosis and on the other side calcification where there's also like very important emerging data showing how important imaging is to plan your strategy and to improve your outcomes. So there are certain types of uh, anatomies or pathologies where you just do imaging at the end of the procedure and then check your outcome and that's it. But particularly in this combination bifurcation and calcium probably you need imaging at various steps. You will need imaging at the beginning in order to understand the localization of calcium, the phenotypes of calcium, because there are so many phenotypes, the involvement of the main versus side branch, in order to plan your initial strategy, your initial strategy regarding the two branches, but also your initial strategy regarding how are you going to modify the calcium in the main branch and how do, are you going to modify the calcium in the side bench? So, yeah. so, it's not, uh, so, it, so, so it is complex, but imaging will help you to decide at the beginning. And then you would probably need imaging on the way, uh, even before you decide which st stenting strategy you are going to use. Are you going to do, go provisional? Are you going to start with the side branch? Are you going to a hybrid strategy? And in all these aspects, imaging may help to show you the success of your initial lesion preparation strategy and your approach to the bifurcation. And of course, then the final imaging to assess your success. Thank you. Yeah, so using imaging at various time points of the procedure is key when you're treating calcified bifurcations. What are the keys to success for you, Miroslav? Yeah, definitely. As we know, lesion preparation is the most important topic. And now um, the preparation of calcified lesions includes a um, few options. Of course, we can start with uh, just predilatation with NC balloons, but in many cases the anatomy is very complex, so we have circular um, um, plaques uh, which need much more uh, preparation uh, time and then we need some special devices. What you can use it 
is um, IVL. This is something what is simple and very effective in coronary bifurcations. Why? Because you have always the option to have a wire in the main branch and wire in the side branch. If you just go with um, rotor blade or use or with orbital atherectomy, then per definition you have only one wire in one vessel. So it is sometimes a bit problematic. So uh, you can do this, uh, but uh, if you go um, for lesion preparation just to make a channel, sometimes it's needed just to make a channel with rotor blade and then on top to use IVL. So the combination of uh, all these strategies is probably in few cases definitely necessary but in majority of cases just make a channel for to use uh, IVL and then uh, go ahead with IVL lesion preparation stenting if needed double stenting which makes of course uh, the the bifurcation lesion uh, much more complex or PCI much more complex and I fully agree with Mohammed then you need uh, additional information from imaging particularly uh, at the end, just just to check the final result and if needed to perform uh, to perform additional steps to achieve a perfect uh, final result. Mohammed, quick final message from you. So it is a complex topic, but our aim should be to try to make complex more or less simple and safe. So uh, our approach should at the end uh, involve some additional considerations as well. It's not only the anatomy we're looking at, but it's also the patient and the setting. Um, and this is why I think we have a session where um, um, both of you are going to be involved today exactly on this topic, where we're going to see different cases, um, not only different anatomies, but also different clinical scenarios. And this is important to combine uh, the uh, um, information we get from the clinical setting, from the anatomy, in order to decide for a strategy that is at the end suitable for this patient and is simple and safe. Thank you. So we've heard about calcified bifurcations. It's an important topic that combines bifurcations and calcified lesions to complex subsets. It is aided by intracoronary imaging in planning, executing, and optimizing the procedure, which here has a great value. And finally, the keys to success is to simplify and streamline the procedure as much as possible so that you, through standardization of your process, can also predict uh, potential complications and deal with these complex lesion subsets. Thank you very much.